Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am Susan Clifton here in Pompano Beach, Florida, and I am a mixed media artist specializing in fabric mosaic. Today I want to talk about artist opportunities and how your website can bring you opportunities other than sales. Um, some of you might not think they're opportunities though, so let's talk about all of that. Stay tuned. <music> So, whether you're an artist or not an artist, but you just like hearing people talk about their process or talk about different techniques, or possibly if you are an artist, maybe how you can promote your art, um, please subscribe, like this video, comment below, all of the above. So, I will uh, get started. So, your website is not just for showing people your art. It's also a great way for opportunities to come your way. Now, whether or not you see some of those opportunities as real opportunities, or maybe um, too many times you've been asked to do something for nothing. And, you know, there are a lot of uh, people out there, organizations that look to take advantage of an artist. For some reason, they don't think we should get paid for the work that we do. Um, I don't know if it's because they think we're just playing or, or what it is, but they think that we, everything that we do should just be donated. Um, so a lot of those opportunities you might want to walk away from and say, what is in, in there for me? Unless it's a, a charity that you're super passionate about and you want to help, and that's, that's fine. But if how many times have you heard as an artist, if you are an artist, how many times have you heard you'll get great exposure from this? This is something that if you talk to other artists and you say the word exposure in exchange for work, they just, they roll their eyes, they groan, they do, uh, it's just a horrible thing because we've heard it so many times before and that exposure equals zero, zero everything, zero opportunities, zero dollars, it's just, it's, it's become, if, if, over the years it just becomes, please don't say that word to me. Do not say exposure. But sometimes an opportunity comes your way. And yes, you, it's not dollars. There's no dollars in it for you. Um, but it's something you're going to do anyway. You're going to paint anyway. And it is going to bring other opportunities to you, like maybe you can get, get press from it. Um, now that's, again, the word exposure, but a lot of times, if, you know, if you're applying for grants and you're applying for um, fellowships and things like that, they do want to see that you have press. So if you're trying to generate press, you have to have things going on that um, are news, newsworthy. So these are the kinds of opportunities and the kinds of exposure I'm talking about. Not, not being in an exhibition or painting the side of a building for exposure, but literally get, being able to use that opportunity to get you some press in a major newspaper or magazine. But how do you get those opportunities? You only get them if you can be found. So how are you found? You're found through social media. That, that's a given these days. But years ago, 10 years ago, that wasn't necessarily um, a viable way. I don't even think, I don't know how long Facebook's been around, but um, Instagram was not around. And you had to have a website, and I think you still do, but you have to have a website so that when people are searching um, specifically for an artist for something like this, then you need to get found. So. When I first started my website, being a South Florida artist, I wanted to make sure I ranked for South Florida artist. And it was a lot easier back then. And I had, like if you typed in South Florida artist, I was right there on the first page. And maybe I would, it would fluctuate, I'd end up on page two, but then I'd end up back on page one. And there was a, a woman, I think she was living in North Carolina at the time, and she had created an idea, a company called Art in Hand. 
and she was putting art on playing cards. And these, uh, she was doing them in like um, series. So she had one called the Portland Project. So it was Artists of Portland. And she had artists of, um, I think it was Charlotte, North Carolina. And she wanted to do a USA project. And so what her idea was to pick an artist from each state and have them paint something that was representative of that state. That's why I'm standing in front of my flamingo. So of course she, she typed in Florida artist and she still found me anyway. So that, that was pretty good. And uh, she sent me an email and asked me if I would be interested. And she attached the contract. And at first, my fir first instinct was, no, I'm not going to do something for nothing, a whole painting for nothing. Um, but then I read the fine print and I read the contract. And I get to keep the painting, obviously. She just gets a high-res digital that she's only going to use on the deck of cards. And, you know, this deck of cards is going to be sold all over the country and in museum shops and places like that. Now, you'd say, okay, what's the, that exposure bringing you? Not a whole hell of a lot. But I did, from that, I sent out a press release locally uh, to the newspapers, magazines, and I got a story in the Sunday Sun Sentinel arts section all about how I, a Pompano artist, was included in this deck of cards. So that today, even today, is still on the internet and that is a very good link back to my website. Google sees that as a, a high-ranking backlink, if you know anything about backlinks and how Google works. Plus, over the years, I have received emails from people who bought the deck of cards and have contacted me um, because they Googled me and they easily find me. Thank goodness. Anyway, they easily find me, they send me an email, and they're interested in buying a print. So I am getting the kind of exposure that I was hoping I would get. I'm pleased to say that the producer of this deck chose to feature my card on the front of the box. The presentation was better than I expected and my flamingo was included front and center on most of the marketing materials. So at the time that I did this painting or, or she approached me, I had just finished my art aquatic series and I knew I didn't want to do that anymore. And I was in the process of um, creating figurative work using fabric mosaic on the bodies. And I really didn't want to be taken away from that, but I didn't want to lose this opportunity either. And I wasn't really sure what form this was going to take. So it was a fun experiment and um, I had already done the layout and already did a 12 by 12 test to see if this was even going to work. because. At that time, I didn't, I hadn't a lot of experience with the fabric mosaic to create a body. So um, I was, I did a little bit of experimenting. So after doing this layout and everything, she then informs me, the woman that's putting this deck of cards together, that my card was going to be the two of clubs. And if you look at the flamingo, it forms the number two. So that was just. It was like kismet, you know, kind of thing. It just uh, fell into place, so to speak. So after I did my test, I then started my larger canvas to the proportions that she uh, that she dictated. Uh, she didn't dictate size, just proportions. So I had to be able to reduce down to the size that fits on the card. So the next time somebody reaches out to you, either through social media or your website, with an opportunity, think twice about that opportunity. Is this something that's really going to you know, enhance your career, or is it just going to side, you know, sidestep whatever you're currently working on that maybe you know, it's going to take a few weeks out of, your, out of your life for nothing, or is this a true opportunity? 
So um, that's all relative. It all depends on where you are in your career and um, what you're willing to do for opportunities, exposure. So thank you for stopping by. Please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear other artists' opinions of what they think is a good opportunity or what they think is a waste of their time. And if you're not an artist, how do you feel about asking an artist to do something for nothing? Have you ever like, even thought twice about that? Or is this something that uh, you just think is done? Uh, this is a conversation that I think we need to have again, and I would love to do like a Zoom call with a couple of artists talking about this so that maybe the public can see just how we feel about constantly being asked for favors. Anyway, <laughs> I don't want to be too negative about it. This is a positive channel, and I like to take opportunities and turn them into something positive. So, uh, Come again soon and see you next time. Bye-bye.